In this video, we are going to learn how to derive the sum and difference formulas. Now, what the sum and difference formulas are are when you have the sum or the difference of two angles within a trig function, you can rewrite them as trig functions of each of those angles by themselves and some sort of sum and product of them. So, for example, cosine of alpha plus beta, alpha and beta being two different angles, or the same, can be equal is equal to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine alpha times sine beta. And for cosine of alpha minus beta, it's cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus sine alpha, sine beta. So you'll see the structure is very similar, but whenever we add on the inside here, we subtract out here. When we subtract on the inside here, we add out here. Now let's see where this formula comes from. And I've drew a few scenarios down here. So here is a beta angle. Here's an alpha angle, and we're first going to look at this alpha minus beta angle, which exists right here in between the two. When I subtract beta, I'm left with alpha minus beta. And if I were to rotate this angle to the um, x-axis, it would look something like this, with an alpha minus beta angle going there. Now, one thing that's true as I shifted the, that is this distance between these two points on the circle, that distance, even though I rotate it, remains the same. Because they both have that same interior angle. And these these lengths here should, are the radii, so it still remains that this side across from the same size angle should be equal. So what I can do is use the distance formula to set up two equal statements. So the distance form is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, if I take these points over here, x2 is cosine of alpha minus beta. So I can write the square root of, parentheses, cosine of alpha minus beta, and then minus x1, which is 1, that's squared, plus y2, which is the sine of alpha minus beta, minus y1, which is 0, squared, would be th that red distance here. Now, that should be equal to the square root of x2 being sine or cosine of alpha. minus x1, x1 cosine of beta squared plus y2, which is sine of alpha, minus y1, which is sine of beta squared. Now, it's a very long statement here, but these are equal. And if I go through and start to simplify this, I'll eventually end up with one of these formulas as you'll see. So first I'm going to square both sides and I'm going to square these expressions underneath. So when I square this expression I get cosine squared of alpha minus beta minus 2 cosine of alpha minus beta because it's a perfect square trinomial. I just multiply these two together and double it and then plus 1 for that 1 squared, plus, this is a 0, so that's a sine squared of alpha minus beta. And this will be equal to, again, get our squared both sides, so the square roots are gone. Squaring this would give me cosine squared of alpha uh, minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta plus cosine squared of beta and then plus again there's a lot of terms here I have sine squared of alpha minus 2 sine of alpha sine of beta Again, following that perfect square trinomial, multiplying these together and doubling it, and then squaring the last term, and plus sine 
square root of beta. So we have a lot of terms here, but some patterns start to occur. First, I see cosine squared of alpha minus beta and sine squared of alpha minus beta. beta. Using the Pythagorean identity, I know sine squared of, the, of one angle plus sine squared of the same angle should equal one. So together, these two equal one. So I can replace all that with negative two cosine of alpha minus beta plus one and then plus another one will be equal to, again, I have this cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. So again, together that gives me one. These two middle terms don't necessarily combine into anything nice, so I'm just going to write them out. Cosine of alpha sine, uh, cosine of times cosine of beta minus two sine of alpha sine of beta. And again, we have sine squared beta plus cosine squared beta, which again is another one. We can see here that we have two on the left and two on the right, so I can subtract two from both sides. And I'll be left with negative two cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to negative two cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus two sine of alpha sine of beta. And again, if I divide each side by negative two, I end up with cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to cosine of alpha cosine of beta plus sine of alpha sine of beta. You'll see here this matches that formula we saw up here. So that's how you derive one of these. Now using identities we can actually just find all the other ones without doing nearly as much work. So for example a plus b is the same thing as alpha minus uh, negative beta. So I can get cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cosine of alpha minus negative beta. And I can use that same identity I just derived to evaluate this, giving me cosine of alpha times cosine of negative beta instead, because instead of minus beta, it's minus negative. So cosine of negative beta plus sine of alpha, sine of negative beta. And again, cosine's an even function, so that negative goes away. So I get cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And this negative comes out, so now I have minus sine alpha, s sine of beta. And that's where that other upper formula comes from. Now I can continue to find all of these identities. Again, here's, an, here's two more identities that aren't the sum and difference, but they'll be very useful for what we're about to use to find sine of alpha plus beta. Because now what I can do is that I know that cosine of pi over two minus theta should equal sine. And in case you don't understand why that is, we can actually use this identity we just proved to show that. So here we would have cosine of alpha which is pi over two times cosine of beta, which in this case is just theta, plus sine of, al of alpha, which is pi over two, sine of beta, which is theta, and if I evaluate cosine of pi over two, that's just zero. So I have zero times cosine of theta plus sine of pi over two, which is one times sine of theta. And the zero cancels out and I'm left with just sine of theta. So then I, can, I just showed that cosine of 
pi over 2 minus theta is equal to sine of theta. And I can do the same thing now for sine of pi over 2 minus theta. I can actually use the one I just proved. Sine of theta is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. I can rewrite this as cosine of pi over 2 minus parentheses pi over 2 minus theta. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Neg minus negative theta is just cosine of theta. So again, I proved both of those identities. I'm going to use the these to actually prove what sine of alpha plus beta is. Because in order to get this, I'm going to use a very clever trick. I'm going to now rewrite sine as that p cosine of pi over 2 minus the angle. So I will get cosine of pi over 2 minus that angle of alpha plus beta. Which can be rewritten as cosine of one angle as pi over 2 minus alpha and my other angle as just minus beta. I read distribute that negative. And now I have that cosine of alpha minus beta set up going and I can continue to simplify. So here it would be the cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha times the cosine of just beta and then plus that's what the identity use sine of the first angle so sine of pi over 2 minus alpha times sine of beta and now cosine of pi over 2 minus an angle is just sine of that angle so now this becomes sine of alpha cosine of beta plus sine oop cosine because sine of pi over 2 minus an angle is cosine, so cosine of alpha times sine of beta. And that's where the sine of a alpha plus beta formula comes from. And I can do something very similar that I did over here for sine of alpha minus beta. That could be rewritten as sine of alpha plus negative beta and I can use that formula right here and replace alpha with alpha and beta with negative beta give me sine of alpha times uh, cosine of negative beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of negative beta and I can use those even and odd properties to get rid of those negatives again cosine the negative just goes away so sine of alpha times cosine of beta but this sine of negative beta the negative is taken out so now it's minus cosine of alpha sine of beta. So again, matches that bottom formula there. So you'll see one small difference is that with the cosine sum and difference uh, uh, identities, you have cosine, cosine, sine, sine. That's how they're paired up. And whenever it adds on the inside, it subtracts with the identity and vice versa. 
But with sine, you'll get a combination of sine and cosine of those angles, plus cosine of alpha sine of beta. Just reverse the uh, trig function so they can use the other angles. But you'll see that the plus sign matches. But when I subtract, subtract the, the sign also matches, so it's minus. So that is those are the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. So you may be wondering, are there some for tangent? Well, yes, of course there are. We actually have two more to figure out. We have now tangent of alpha plus beta and tangent of alpha minus beta. And this is what the formulas look like. But let's show how we can get to those. So first, let's look at sine of alpha plus tangent of alpha plus beta, which can actually be rewritten as sine of alpha plus beta, which I'll, I'll refrain from using the colors until the very end, just to save some time over cosine of alpha plus beta using that reciprocal identity. And now I know the formulas for these, so I can rewrite that as sine of alpha cosine of beta. plus cosine of alpha sine of beta all over uh, cosine of alpha cosine of beta minus sine of alpha sine of beta. So now from here I want to show create tangents in my numerator and my do denominator so I can match that tangent. The best way to do that is to sine over cosine. So I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by cosine alpha and cosine beta. So you can see me making sine over cosine while the cosine over cosines will start to cancel. So this can equal sine of alpha cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha sine of beta all over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, and my denominator do the same thing, so cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta, all over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, and now each of those terms will be divided by that denominator. So I'll have sine of alpha, cosine of beta, divided by cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus cosine of alpha, sine of beta, divided by cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, all over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta, all over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. So again, I'm dividing everything by that. And as I start to simplify, I'll see the cosines will cancel out. And I'll be left with sine over cosine of alpha, which is tangents of alpha then plus the cosine alphas cancel I'm with sine of beta over cosine of beta which means I have plus tangents of beta all over here all the cos the cosine alphas cancel and the cosine betas cancel leave me with just one minus sine of alpha over cosine alpha is tangent of alpha times sine of beta over cosine of beta, which is tangent of beta. And that's where that formula comes from. It took a little bit of simplification, but now that we have it, we can just use it. And then the proof for tangent of alpha minus beta, well, you don't have to go through this whole process again. We can actually just rewrite that as tangent of alpha plus negative beta
and then I can use the same formula I just derived and I can get tangent of alpha plus tangent of negative beta now all over 1 minus tangent of alpha tangent times tangent of negative beta and again tangent is an odd function very similar to sine so that negative can be factored out changing this to tangent of alpha minus tangents of beta over 1 plus now because negative makes that negative negative so plus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta now you may be thinking well this took a, a quite a long time just to derive them all but I think it's very important to know where your formulas come from before you start using them so in the following videos we'll start applying these formulas but at least now you know where all of the formulas come from and that is how you derive the sum and difference formulas